get up, get ready, because we have another at-home edition of World of Fortnite for you. I'm your host, Sarah Pookie and we have a great show for you today. The rotation has the top five ninjas in Save the World. We're looking at the newest issue of the Batman Zero Point crossover in Point of Interest. And of course, we have everything the community is passing around in low ground. The rumor mill is at it again. This time, it's saying Fortnite might be adding an OP gun to the loot pool. Data miner HypeX put out a tweet that found an unreleased weapon named Bad News. Speculation is that it's the return of the Zapatron legendary sniper rifle, a gun that was so overpowered that it was removed very quickly back in 2017. No idea if it's true or not, but if it is, watch out because the real Canadian sniper will be coming for you. All right, let's keep the show rolling because it's all about ninjas in the rotation. <gasps> As you progress through Save the World and the enemy levels go up, you'll see fewer ninjas in matches. In Endgame Twine, ninjas are definitely the least used subclass in the game. Constructors are the meta. Outlanders are great for farming, soldiers spam explosives, resources being abundant, but most ninjas actually require you to get close to groups of enemies, which often puts you in a vulnerable position. Today, we'll be taking you through the top five ninjas that are not only great in terms of DPS, but are also pretty tanky. At number five, we have Mermonster Ken. Ken gets a damage boost based on the percentage of missing health with a small chance of conjuring a phantasm with your attacks. Ken is often paired with the Storm King's Fury, a mythic hardware weapon that charges up on hitting enemies with it. The charges can then be released as a barrage of comets raining down from the sky. Since this is a heavy attack, Ken benefits from having buffs such as software and rapid charge in his loadout. This combination is pretty fun to use and is a great way to damage and disorient enemies with the comet strike. Number four on our list is Lynx Cassandra, the mythic ninja. This one's pretty different from others on this list because she doesn't benefit from one specific weapon. Lynx's ability lets you hover for four seconds when using Kanai Storm, giving you a 140% damage boost when hovering. This boost applies to all types of weapons and works best with explosives such as the mythic Storm King's Wraith. In fact, using the Wrath with Lynx is one of the best ways to defeat the Storm King for further grinding mythics. The Storm King is the toughest mission in Save the World, and players have managed to solo it just by using Lynx with the Storm King's Wrath. You can imagine how good Lynx must be in regular missions against smaller mini bosses and smashers. A 140% weapon damage boost is simply unparalleled in Save the World. At number three, we have Paleo Luna, the tankiest melee ninja in the game. Luna's ability makes it so that the more health she has, the more damage she deals. Her ability adds a percentage of current health to melee weapon damage. This pairs well with Blast from the past, which removes your shields and increases max health by 200%. Now you're tanky and dealing a lot more damage. On top of that, the monster smash perk lets you leech health with your melee attacks. Kaleo Luna is considered to be one of the few unkillable heroes in the game, and as long as you're actively killing enemies, you'll never find yourself low on health. Luna pairs well with the mythic sword, and the crit buffs in her Lodo go well with those on the sword itself. Number two on our list is Stoneheart Farah. Based on Cupid, Farah is a bow and arrow based hero. Her perk, Cupid's arrow makes your bows splinter when they hit enemies and deal 60% of the damage to five nearby enemies. With the right loadout, Farah is good at both single target and crowd control. She pairs well with the Xenon bow that can shoot through builds and structures similar to the Neon Sniper Rifle. The Xenon bow deals a ton of damage with a crit build, which further adds up given the crit buffs in Farah's loadout. You can also pair her with Lynx's Kunai Storm hover effect, which can let you hover for a few seconds while dealing even more damage. At number one, we have Anti-Cuddle Sarah, the best crowd control hero in the game. There have been times when defense missions are failing badly, and the player using Sarah was able to win the game for the entire team. 
Sarah's signature weapon is the Ear Splitter, which was definitely meant to be used with her. When paired with the right hero Lodo, the Ear Splitter's heavy attack sends most husks around you dancing, while also dealing damage, healing you, and recharging your energy as you get kills. Which means that you can infinitely keep spamming it as long as you're surrounded by husks, allowing you to be a trap tunnel all by yourself. Sarah doesn't do much to smashers or mini bosses, but the trade-off is worth it because she can easily solo entire encampments on her own, even in PL160 missions. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Playing with Pooks. I am Pookieface underscore, and I am about to play some Fortnite. Now, I haven't played a ton this season, as you can see, I'm, I'm level two. Um, but from what I've seen online so far, people are having a ton of fun with this season, specifically with the UFOs that are in the game. This week, I'm just gonna keep playing through and, and see if we can't get a victory all this season. You know what? Let's go Holly Hedges. I haven't been there yet this season. Now, somebody did drop here with me, so thank god all I found so far are shields and bandages. I didn't pick up that AR, did I? What the? Help me, I'm poor! Shoot. Alone. Guys, why can I not see this guy sniping? Is he over there? You know, I wanted to try and win the game. I didn't want to have to deal with all of these people being lunatics, so... I'm not gonna. Act natural! Everything's on fire! I am very happy that they brought back um, like the regular weapons. I was not a huge fan of like the crafting and the upgrading on the fly. It was just too much. 10 players remaining. Can we do it? I don't know. It's a big ask. As the sun rises over the marsh, Spooky face underscore spots her next victim. And I don't have enough, enough mats to remotely come close to tarping out to where I would need to be.
there it is. Umbrella time. <laughs> that was rough, guys. Honestly, I didn't know if I had that. I don't know if I had it in me. I didn't know. I did not know. I, um, I'm shaking. Look at me. <laughs> that was a rush. I did not think that I was going to get that man. He was a better builder than I was, but... All right, look at this, 10 battle stars, next. Aw, yeah, let's go. There's the umbrella that I wanted. Pew, pew, UFOs, lasers. Anyways, guys, um, hopefully you enjoyed <laughs> this edition of Playing With Pooks. You got to check out the Victory Royale umbrella in this one, so. I mean, I guess that's nothing that you couldn't have found online if you just Googled it. But we had fun together. We had a moment. So thank you, everybody, for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I see him. Yeah. Ooh! <laughs> Told you. Snipe in the face, yeah? Ready on? Con eso les digo todo, hermano. Caché el piano, así lo cacho. Con eso digo todo. Oh my god. Dude, he's so bad. He's so bad. <laughs> I think he's just letting me now. Yeah, look, he's like not even aiming at me. I don't think he knows. I don't think he knows you can shoot it down. Hit him, hit him. Oh! Oh! What the f the worst! Чел полетел, мне интересно. Минус 175 просто. As much as hot drops always seems to brighten my day, nothing makes me smile quite like some good old slow ground content. First up, Mojave 730 gets the win with a helping hand.
Helping Hand, Helping Finn, uh, who's keeping track, really? Next up, Bigaboo14 thinks they may be the worst UFO driver you'll ever see. They may be right. That's some pretty terrible driving. He got rocked. Moving on, we had a bowling clip last week, but Icy Gaming123 takes it that one step further. me up for the LTM, but I want to be able to play it on most and keyboard. Bowling on the Wii honestly hurt my arm. I'm pretty sure I have more muscle development in my right arm because of that game alone. Next up, Gab1237 wants to talk about UFO hitboxes. Clearly nothing to see here working as intended. Finally, Fortnite Bambi 10 uses their brain while UFO dueling. <laughs> Gotta say, that was some quick thinking. Kudos to you. I loved this edition of Low Ground. It was out of this world? Huh? UFO content? All right, moving on, Point of Interest gives us a look at the latest issue of the Batman Zero Point crossover. The fifth issue of the Batman and Fortnite crossover is out, and we're only one issue away from the end of this epic story. We've learned a bunch of new things about the Fortnite universe so far, and hopefully all of this will reflect in the actual game soon. In the fourth issue, we saw Batman and the group open the underground pathway into the IO's territory, and Batman's realization about there being a mole in the group. Today, we'll be taking you through the fifth comic, its hidden secrets, and speculations for what's coming next. If you haven't read the previous issues already, Ready, be sure to check out our previous videos for a thorough breakdown of each issue. After spending time in what feels like an abandoned research site, Batman and the group come face to face with members of the IO. The group begins to shoot back and defend themselves, but Batman points out something important. Magnus the Viking is on fire and looks like he wouldn't hesitate to seriously harm someone. The rest are also okay with shooting, but Batman stops them. He reminds them that since they have all escaped the loop, killing someone would result in permanent death. Sounds like they Convenient excuse for Batman's no killing rule, doesn't it? So we do not kill. Batman then takes a look at one of the knocked out guards and recognizes him from the loop. It surely looks like Jonesy, or rather, a snapshot of Jonesy. I say this because in a previous season, Chaos Agent has done something similar by recruiting snapshots of EGO members and other outfits and getting them to work under him. In a conversation, Batman also confirms that Fishstick did not survive his injuries and has died. The group enters a giant room filled with artifacts, one of which mentions the Zero Point as the origin of creation. The IO guards end up finding them, and Batman gets charged up like always and begins flinging liquid nitrogen capsules at them. He knocks out the guards and destroys their way back to the island, leaving the group no option but to keep moving forward. They find themselves at a place we've previously seen in the Season 5 story trailer, where Agent Jones used a giant device to transport himself to our island using the Zero Point. However, the terminal has lost power when the group arrives. The terminal controls the panels which harness the energy of the zero point to form a pathway to any dimension in existence. Suddenly, Eternal Voyager goes nuts, starts shouting, and jumps into the zero point. The zero point cycles through multiple realities every second and tears him apart, sending parts of him to each reality. If one of my friends ever were to do that, I'm unfriending them on Facebook. Batman has seen so much at this point that after that gruesome death, he's like, okay. 
how do we power the terminal now? He starts speaking in technical jargon, trying to access the terminal using specific vibrations, and it works. Even Renegade Raider is so tired of everything, escaping the loop too early, not knowing what the island is, wanting to return to her own world, and kids constantly tweeting Epic about returning her to the store that she's like, I don't care how risky this is, I'm getting out of here immediately. She succeeds, jumping in as soon as she gets a glimpse of the version of reality she's from. Right after she leaves, Batman notices some inconsistencies in the story and figures out who the imposter is. He accuses Deathstroke of killing Fishstick and using the group to find a way out. Deathstroke doesn't even deny it, and after a brief fight, suggests a truce instead. Everyone escapes back to their own reality using the zero point, leaving only Batman, Catwoman, and Deathstroke, who ends up betraying them again. He uses a rift to go to jump back to his own dimension, calling it a compass that can guide him home. Catwoman disarms him before he jumps in, but now she is stranded in the Fortnite world with Batman. This gives us more information into the nature of the rifts. Back in season 6, Jonesy used one of these to summon the leader of the seven by simply chucking it into the zero point. I have to be honest, I'm actually pretty impressed by how much lore we're actually getting out of this Batman crossover comic because a lot of the time with these kinds of crossovers, they're usually just throwaway stories. So big kudos to Epic and DC for putting together a really cool crossover story. That about does it for me, but for more of our content, check out our YouTube and Twitter channels at Squad State. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, here's your Victor Royale with cheese. <laughs>